Hi, it's Brad Harrison with Wheatstone. In the last video, we set up this AudioArts DMX console. Now in this video, let's see if we can pass some audio through it and verify the setup. I've got this set of computer speakers that I brought in. I'm going to use them as control room monitors. I've just got them sitting behind the gear for now. And I've got a cable connection in the back which terminates in an RJ45. It's a piece of CAT6. If we look at the back of the DMX engine, you're going to find an RJ45 jack that's labeled CR out. That's the control room output, and that's where we're going to plug in our monitors. I've got another piece of CAT6 cable, one end of which is an RJ45, the other end is an 8th inch mini plug currently connected to my mobile phone, just to give us an audio source for these tests. I'm going to take the end of that cable and I'm going to plug it into analog input 1 on the Razer. Also, because AudioArts gives us some software tools we can use to configure the system, I'm going to plug a cable from my PC to any open port on the built-in switch. All the software you need to configure your DMX is on this USB stick. It ships with the console. After installing the software, but before running it, you need to make sure that the IP address on the network adapter of your PC is set to the same subnet as WheatNet IP. All WheatNet IP devices are set at the factory to the .87 subnet. For today's setup, set your network adapter's IP address to 192.168.87.200. This address will not conflict with the addresses of the DMX or its engine or the Razor. Remember, everything in WheatNet IP uses fixed Ethernet addresses. DHCP will not work. After installing the software, we're going to run Navigator. You don't need to have this running for the console to work, but I'd like to use it to set up a name for one of my sources. I'm going to select the Razor in the System device display, and then I'm going to select the Sources tab. The first input has a system assigned name, but I'm going to select it and click the Edit button. That will allow me to change that name. In the Name field, I'm just going to type Phone. And then when I'm done, I'll just press enter. And that name is assigned to that source. Okay, let's go find that input on the console. I'll go to the encoder at the top of the fader and press it. The OLED now shows a list of sources. With the encoder, I'll just scroll to phone and press the encoder again. And the OLED confirms the source has been assigned. I'll make sure my control room monitor volume is turned up and I'll assign the source fader to the program bus then turn the channel on and raise the fader. And there you have it, a DMX making audio.